which dead celebrities are treated like saints, but were truly awful people when they were alive. Pablo Picasso was an abusive raging narcissist who sucked the life out of people around him. His muses were generally young women he'd domineer and destroy. But he was never called an asshole. Steve Jobs was an asshole to his family. His own kids hated him. His wife only stayed for the money. He also was known for throwing work colleagues under the bus to cover his own ass. And taking credit for things he didn't invent. Edit, thanks to everyone for the awards. Wasn't expecting this to blow up like it did. Thank you all. I am from the future and Chris Brown belongs to this list too now. I'm from the present and he's belonged here for 10 years. Wasn't John Lennon an abusive husband? Edit, this thread is a fucking roller coaster of emotions. Also abusive to his son. He absolutely hates when people tell him how awesome or cool his dad was. P.T. Barnum. All cause of the greatest showman colon. They changed so much about his story for that movie that there was almost no reason to make it about Barnum. Thomas Edison. Literally one of the biggest pieces of shit. Stole patents. Stomped out competitors with physical force and violence. Electrocuted an elephant to mislead the public his inferior power grid was less dangerous than Nikola Tesla's. And a lot more. Whispers Tarpsy. Big pun. His kids and widow fucking hated him. He pistol whipped his wife in front of his children and broke her face. Damn I didn't know this at all. My mother. Who was a young adult during Bing Crosby's peak. Said that he was a horrible husband and father. A serial philanderer and violent. I think two or three out of his four sons wound up killing themselves. What a horrific legacy for a man to leave. Reading all these things. Is there anyone who wasn't the worst? Christopher Lee. I haven't seen anything bad about him. A few hiccups. Sure. But overall a swell guy. Alfred Hitchcock. My grandpa worked on Hitchcock's last movie as a key grip. Supposedly. Just as they were about to shoot the last shot of the last scene. Hitchcock said I'm tired. Let's wrap. I'm going home. The entire crew tried to explain to him that this was their last day on set. And that they were scheduled to fly halfway across the country the next day. If they wrap now. They'd have to recreate the entire set in a studio lot when they got back. Costing them a lot of money just for an incredibly short film time. But Hitchcock insisted. So they wrapped. Went home. And rebuilt the set from scratch. And that's ignoring the fact that Hitchcock had never gotten out of his car and had instead directed the entire thing from inside. Bing Crosby. Years ago. While watching Blue Skies with him and Fred Astaire my dad gushed over Astaire's legacy. I asked what Bing was like and he said. Besides beating his wife and kids. What a voice. Can't watch anything with him in it now. He was a monster to anyone close to him. There was a documentary where his kids spoke out about the abuse. I'll see if I can find it. Edit, an, article, http, colon slash slash, www. Up. Comamp archives the 14th of March 1983 Crosby's children claim he abused them slash 5 trillion and 7 billion 660 million 964 thousand 411. Alfred Hitchcock was really really terrible. I don't know much about him besides his movies. Tell me more. Frank Sinatra. My grandpa's girlfriend and her husband used to work for him. And he was a right bastard. Didn't think that he had to pay people that worked for him. Treated employees bad. All the usual human stuff. Edit. My grandpa was a widower and his girlfriend was a widow. Sinatra saved my life once. His bodyguards were stomping me. And he said boys. That's enough. Frank Lloyd Wright. Abandoned his wife and children to take a mistress. Who was herself already married. He drove his butler insane. And the guy ended up killing Wright's mistress and her kids. Burned down his studio. And committed suicide by drinking acid. Wright wasn't there at the time. Wright's response to this was to rebuild the studio exactly as it was before. Supposedly to honor his mistress and their children. But it was pretty obvious to people at the time that he just wanted to protect his legacy as an architect. As many of his most famous innovations were showcased in the design. Sure enough. It became the museum to his work and is still visited today. Committed suicide by drinking acid. That has got to be one of the most metal ways to commit suicide I have ever heard. XXXTentacion was a piece of shit. 
I hate saying it because outside of this incident he actually seemed like a good guy. But on two occasions, Paul Walker dated 16-year-old girls. Once when he was 28. And again when he was 32. This was all while he had a young daughter of his own. The age of consent in California is 18. Meaning if he did anything sexual with them, he could have been charged and indicted on statutory rape. I guess being a predator is okay. Though, if you're really good looking. Paul Allen. Anyone that has a not allowed to look at me policy in place for his own arena staff is kind of a dick. Edit, didn't expect this to blow up at all. Good thing Patrick Bateman killed him. I haven't seen Michael Landon's name come up yet. He did amazing on Little House on the Prairie. But apparently he was actually a raging alcoholic and even his own kids made a documentary about the father I knew. Jimmy Savile. Until after he died and everything came out about the bad stuff he did. I've worked for Prince and it's a not so hidden secret he was absolutely awful to work with. There used to be a saying you're nobody in this industry until you've been fired by Prince. He's a legend for sure but was awful to those who put the show on. And his ego was out of control. And when it came down to it, he died from a nod. So for someone who was so quick to fire anyone over a simple mistake and he so critical of weakness, it turns out he had some hidden weaknesses of his own. Also, from all accounts Jim Morrison was an awful awful person. Pablo Picasso. When I was a kid I saw this movie based on his ex-wife's memoir of him and he was a total abusive creep. Elvis. He was with Priscilla when she was 15 I think it's probably safe to assume they were having sex. From she was 14. He was 24. Johnny Carson. He cheated on his wives and was an all-around prick when he wasn't on camera. The most widely known example was him telling Joan Rivers that she'd never become the star of The Tonight Show, she was the permanent guest host at the time. Then refusing to ever speak to her again after she got a job elsewhere. Don Rickles always used to poke fun at his personal life whenever he was a guest on The Tonight Show. Didn't us Senator Ted Kennedy once kill his assistant while driving? Edit, I've got the whole story at this point. But wow. The story goes a lot darker than I ever imagined. That shit is fucked up. Dwee into a lake, I think. Maybe river. Swam away and left her to drown. Edit, check out Joe Scarborough's past. 2. Dr. Seuss. Had an affair for years while his wife battled cancer. Drove her to suicide. Married the woman he'd been having the affair with a couple months later. Her suicide note is amongst the saddest things I've ever read. Dear Ted. What has happened to us? I don't know. I feel myself in a spiral. Going down down down. Into a black hole from which there is no escape. No brightness. And loud in my ears from every side I hear. Failure. 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 I love you so much. I am too old and enmeshed in everything you do and are. That I cannot conceive of life without you. My going will leave quite a rumor but you can say I was overworked and overwrought. Your reputation with your friends and fans will not be harmed. Sometimes think of the fun we had all through the years. HTTPS colon slash slash EN M Wikipedia Org Wiki Helen Palmer Author I feel like Cosby is as good as dead and would have been beatified if he had died before he got caught. And more people would have refused to believe the truth about him had he died first. About 60% of them all. Most people don't get to the top by being nice. But there are exceptions. Mr. Rogers. Steve Irwin. Bob Ross. Probably XXX Tentacion. Couple people have mentioned him here. But I have never heard a single good word about him. It's probably come up time and again. But John Lennon was not a nice man. His son grew to despise him enough to tell Paul McCartney that he wished Paul was his father. This thread is massive so I'll mention it again but a friend of mine was working a charity show Julian was in and the two of them ended up chatting during a break. Apparently he's really nice. Julian was annoyed that people kept asking him to sing his father's songs and his rant about that just morphed in a general rant about John. My father was abusive too. And this stuff is never all that far away and it really can just come out talking to perfect strangers like that. It's sad that people aren't aware of this shit. Wow I have learned so much from this comment section. Salvador Dali was a fascist that beat women. Patton and MacArthur were pretty shit people too. Fun Dali fact, 
His parents had a child who died of gastroenteritis very early in his life. They named that baby Salvador. Nine months later, they had Salvador Dali. They gave him the same name. And on his fifth birthday took him to the grave of his brother and told him he was the reincarnation of the dead infant. Frank Lloyd Wright. He is seen as a visionary in architecture but he was a horrible person IRL. Raging narcissist. Abandoned his wife and kids to run off with the wife of one of his clients. Nailed down his selected furniture in a client's home because he didn't like what the client wanted. Etc. Architecture is a field where only egomaniacs seem to manage to get on top. Alexander Hamilton. Even the show makes it clear that he was an asshole. A very smart. Driven. Asshole. Jerry Lewis. He treated his family like shit. Cut his kids out of his will and was a real pose on set. Watch some clips on YouTube of him and his behavior. Terrible. Most likely stemming from when he and Dean Martin split from being Martin and Lewis. Everyone thought Dean would disappear and Jerry would go on to be a massive star. As it turned out. It was the complete reverse. He was a bitter. Bitter person. He later said that it was his fault him and Dean Martin broke up. He said his ego had grown too big and was full of himself. It doesn't excuse his behavior but at least he recognized it. Breaking up was the best thing for them as Dino had an amazing career after. Apparently they also remained friendly with each other afterwards. Contrary to popular belief. Ray Charles. Made children all over the place and refused to acknowledge them. Never even tried to see them. Since no one mentioned them yet. Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre. In her letters de Beauvoir mentioned several romantic and sexual relationship with female students of hers. In one case she met a 17-year-old student who she had a relationship. And later introduced her to Sartre who also began to have sex with her. There were a few others who basically made up Sartre's personal harem. While de Beauvoir acted as the pimp, seducing teenage girls into threesomes with Sartre. Additionally both were signatories of a petition to remove the age of consent laws in France. The petition was written by unknown pedo. Gabriel Matzeneff. And signed by other French intellectuals including Foucault, who himself has been accused of sodomizing boys. Damn. Hell really is other people. Bing Crosby. Father of the century. Physically and mentally abusive to all his kids. Alcoholic. Adulterer. Slimy businessman. Check it out. Coco Chanel revered fashion icon and also Nazi sympathizer. She was more than a sympathizer. She was an actual agent for the Nazis. She tried using anti-Jewish Nazi laws to get her two Jewish business partners removed to leave her the sole owner of her brand. But they had outsmarted her before fleeing to the United States. They gave their majority share of the company to someone else who was not Jewish that they trusted. Chanel would use her place in high society to spy on all the other high society people and report back to her lover who was a Nazi officer if anyone was a possible threat to the Nazi party to be dealt with. So she was more than sympathetic. She was literally in bed with them. By some Stones fans. Brian Jones. He deserves to be honored for his role in the band. And for his musical contributions. And it's a shame how his life ended. But he also had a history of domestic violence. How soon until Woody Allen dies? Can we just include people who are really old and long past their sell by date? I second this that being said that Roman Polanski guy is a real sack of shit and so are the Hollywood tool bags that support and defend him. James Brown. Yikes. I lived in Augusta Guard during his later years. On one hand. You'd hear waitresses and gas station attendants, the only full service station left in Augusta was the only place he'd go, speaking about how he tipped with 100s like they were singles. But on the other hand he'd often make the local news for pulling a gun on somebody new. Seemed like twice a year. Folks like power company employees. Meter readers. Etc. Kirk Douglas. It's an open secret in Hollywood that he raped Natalie Wood. I knew she was violently raped, for hours, by someone famous and that her mother knew, it's in her biography. But I didn't know that it was Kirk Douglas and Hollywood knew or at least suspected it was him. Awful. That poor woman. Here's a few in song form. The Chaser, Eulogy Song, HTTPS colon slash slash, Yautu. Beefx Contlig. Maradona. I love my football but goodness he was a terrible person. I read that as Madonna and got so confused.
Thomas fucking Edison. Lou Reed. I love the Velvet Underground but many of the band members were awful. Heroin addicted New York art house goons? I'm shocked. Great stuff. Though. Significant band. Sonny Bono. Massive prick before he passed. Used to hang out and play Sega at his house with his kid. He didn't pass. He hit the fucking thing head on. Kandinsky, fled Germany and let his artist girlfriend stay into his and other greats art so they couldn't be found and destroyed by the Nazis. She was an artist herself and was in danger. As well as would have been killed if the artworks she was hiding were found. He hid in Denmark and instead of returning to her he had forgotten he had a girlfriend, who risked her life, and got married to someone else. To make things worse. He decided to steal his ex's style of abstract painting and this is where his work started to get recognition. Edit, wow. Did he think this would get so much interest? It was Gabrielle Munter he left. My source is an academic and gallery director who worked in the gallery I also worked in. Mainly impressionists, court told. XXXTentacion beat his pregnant wife as well as a gay man while he was in jail. He's not dead. But didn't George Lopez cheat on his wife that gave him a kidney by hooking up with some prostitutes? Jimmy Savile. Absolute monster. His celebrity as an English radio and TV personality gained him unrestricted access to hospitals with disabled children whom he abused. That's putting his life very lightly. Beware if you go on to read more about him.